Hi there, uh, this is the Brassic Gamer Money Saving Tech Tips and uh, this video here is going to be showing you how to repair a broken flash drive. So um, flash drives are fairly important to a lot of us, uh, carrying around a lot of data on them, quite handy for that. They're fairly cheap, uh, quite easily available, um, but if they go wrong uh, it can be very, very sad and distressing. Uh, if you haven't backed up your data, which uh, hands up if you back up your data from your flash drive. Yeah, not many people. Um, so this is, this is a bit of a quirky flash drive, actually. I don't really know exactly what it does, but it's got like a display and a button where you can, it's got a programming um, socket on it. Um, but either way, it's flash drive, essentially. And what happened to this was there was a cable plugged in at this end this end was plugged into the computer and the owner of said stick uh, kicked the cable and ripped off the socket which is right here that should be on there and it's not so fortunately it's a fairly clean break if we look at the contacts uh, where the usb socket attaches then um you wouldn't even know there was one attached really. So what we've got here is on this edge, um, these two parts on the outside, that's where the the metal shield attaches. You can see where that's got uh, broken off there. And the actual contacts themselves, um, they attach to this side. So what we're gonna do is, um, we're simply gonna replace it uh, because We've got a couple of uh, naked memory sticks here. I've taken the uh, taken the case off them, and um, looking for a socket which has the same profile. Now this one isn't quite the same because if I line them up, um, you can see that the metal shield um, at this end is uh, too thin on the stick that I'm holding uh, compared to the one that's come off. So that's not quite going to work, otherwise um, it's not going to fit into the case because I've taken the case off this one as well. So um, this one, however, is almost a perfect match. If we line them up, I'm trying to do this one hand. If we line them up, you can see that they're almost identical. So what we're going to do is, um, we've got some tools here. Um, this is soldering iron been plugged in so it's warmed up it's um, it's a bit old now um, I've used this for quite a lot of different things um, I've got my sponge wet um, just to clean off the end I've got some solder I think I got this from uh, Maplin or something it's fairly cheap solder um, and uh, one of these which I've only just got so this is the first time I'm going to be using this this is what we call a solder sucker so the problem that you have with um, an IC like this, an integrated circuit like this, is that uh, we've got some residual um, solder on there, which we ideally want to remove because we've still got um, a bit of metal stuck in here, which we need to get out. And uh, in order to do that, we're going to have to use the soldering iron to um, warm up the contacts. Um, and the way we remove the old solder is we push this down and we can do this. We can hold in one hand the soldering iron and hold this in the other. And we just hold this right over where we're uh, softening the solder. Press that button and it sucks it back up into the chamber. So um, I've never used one of these before. Um, I've managed to get away for many, many years without one of these. Um, probably hasn't helped my soldering at all. Um, by not do, using one of these before, so we'll see how it works this time. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now and show you the results in a moment. Okay, so we've cleaned up the uh, the old contacts. As you can see, we've now got holes <coughs> on either side there, which is important because the metal um, the, the metal bits on the side here that hold the socket into the board are going to have to go through there. So if we don't have holes, we can't get them in. <clears throat> so uh, that was kind of good. Um, the, the solder sucker worked um, here because there was nothing in the way. The problem we have is that in order to get this socket off this board, 
and we have to soften or remove the solder from each of these four contacts. Now these were folded over, so that was quite easy to do. They weren't soldered on, but these are. Now by the time I've softened this uh, pin over here and got over to this pin, that pin's going to be hard again, so um, it's going to be holding it onto the board. So this is why the solder sucker is needed, because you need to get rid of the solder and not just soften it. Um, but because the socket's in the way, it's proving a little bit tricky. So I'm going to have another go again, otherwise we might end up having to just do a bit of hackery, which is often the way, which is obviously what I did before I had a solder sucker. But anyway, give it a go and we'll see how it goes. Um, as you can see, we have success. The socket has been removed. So there's the old board. Um, this is probably ruined now, um, which is always a risk when you're desoldering something, which is why um, I keep stuff around that's broken. It may not have, it may not function as it's supposed to, but certainly the bits from it can be useful. So I never chuck anything away, which is a nightmare in some ways, but uh, useful in others. Now, um, as you can see, the heat, trouble with resoldering and desoldering and stuff is that these boards are designed to be soldered once. And if you apply too much heat uh, for too long, then you get this discoloration, uh, which partly comes from the flux, which helps the, uh, that comes within the um, solder, helps it to flow. But also if you do apply too much heat for too long, it can damage the board irreparably. So the contacts can lift up off the board and then you don't get um, electricity flowing through the contacts, which is bad. But anyway, we have our socket and we have our broken memory stick. So now it's a case of um, soldering, which is a lot easier than desoldering, I can tell you that. But uh, we've done, you know, a fairly clean job there. So let's have a go at that and see if it works. Okay, so with my own modest soldering skills, that's what we've got. Just hold the soldering iron onto the contacts and hold the solder next to it. And when the contact is hot enough, the solder melts and makes a blob over the contact. And I've also um, soldered the uh, the bracket in place as well so that's not going to be going anywhere very easily so now the moment of truth we need to go and plug it in and see if it mounts fingers crossed here we have a very old windows 7 laptop doesn't really matter as long as it's got a usb socket and let's give it a go yes i think it's safe to say that's working now it's not mounting because this weird device isn't actually a memory stick. I'm not sure, quite sure what it is. It says USB input device. Um, one of my students gave it to me, so I guess I'll ask him tomorrow. But uh, fingers crossed, it looks like it's working, doesn't it? I guess we'll find out tomorrow. Brilliant. So um, hopefully that's given you hope. If you've broken one of your memory sticks, all you need to do is find a spare one get some soldering skills and um, there you go, money saving tips. Um, in terms of ob obtaining spare memory sticks, best thing to do is um, your local computer shop has probably got a bunch of spare ones um, that they don't mind giving away. Otherwise, uh, in if, uh, if you know a school or you're at school, then uh, your IT department or ICT teachers will have all sorts of memory sticks that previous students have left behind and uh, I'm sure they'd be quite happy to donate one to you but obviously uh, the, you need to make sure that the socket there matches uh, with the memory stick that you are trying to fix otherwise you will have trouble fitting it into its original case. Anyway I hope that helps, um, look forward to seeing you in the next video.